Independent Women's Forum spokeswoman and former college swimmer Riley Gaines says that she was attacked and barricaded inside a classroom at San Francisco State University campus last week. This was after she was giving a speech criticizing transgender athletes competing against biological women. Let's take a look. I'm good, I'm coming. You got me, I'm good, I'm good. I'm coming, I'm good, I'm good. Tell her to pay us. Tell her to pay us and then she can go. Ten bucks each. Because you probably got paid for this shit, so we could get paid for it too. On the public campus that we have peace. So what's the end goal here? We're cooperating, so what's next? So So they need to do their job and get her out here. We created a path. It's here. I can't speak to all of you. When we're over talking to each other, we're not going to hear each other. Don't let her hold! SFSU released a statement claiming the attack was mostly just students, quote, peacefully protesting and that it required, quote, tremendous bravery to confront the speaker. Well, Gaines appeared on Fox News yesterday to reject the statement. Let's watch. Welcome to both of you. Riley, I'll start with you. Why were you barricaded and what happened to the people who assaulted you? Um, well, first of all, nothing has happened to the people who assaulted me. The campus police did nothing. The student or the dean of students was there and did nothing. There will be no repercussions unless I have something to do with it. Um, I will be pursuing legal action. These people need to face repercussions. Um, and I was barricaded because after my speech, um, an ambush of people entered into the classroom, turned off the lights, they attacked me. Um, I got escorted out of the room and immediately pushed into that room that we saw on the video. And I was trapped in there for three hours. So incredible story here. So Riley Gaines uh, was speaking. Uh, she, so she was able to give her her, her talk at the campus about uh, you know why, and she competed against uh, Leah Thomas in swimming events. So she was speaking about you know why she thinks it's just it's not fair to female athletes to have to compete against transgender women uh, in in the arena in swimming and anything. So she was she gave that talk. Uh, the students, the activists, the protesters, I, I believe, tried to make a lot of noise, but she was able to talk. And then after they shut off the lights, they chased her. She says she got she got actually punched. She got hit. And then she ended up having to barricade in a room for three hours. We were playing some of that footage. That was like a hostage negotiation. The protesters would not let her leave the room, that room that she was barricaded in. And so that was an administrative figure trying to say, what can we do? What could we give you to get you to leave so that she can exit the campus? And, and some, someone said, like, give us each $10 or something like that. Really uh, horrifying stuff. Obviously, San Francisco State University is a public university. That means it has to follow the First Amendment. It is supposed to allow any you know, student group can invite speakers, even controversial speakers, even conservative speakers, even people who disagree with the students on campus. I, I don't know. I don't even know how many people actually disagree with the views Riley Gaines expressed there. But it's beside the point entirely. She has the right to speak. Uh, really, really disturbing to have an incident like this. She says she was hit twice by a man, not even a transgender woman, but a man. So they have arrived at a situation where their ideology justifies actual men, biological, cisgendered you know, men, punching women. And that is justified in the name of protecting trans rights. When your ideology has arrived at a place where it justifies men punching women, there is a sickness afoot, right? We are regressing as a society. It is so appalling. It's just so appalling that a young woman, a tiny woman, would need an escort of, you know, when she finally was able to leave the campus, you know, six hours later, there was 10 police officers around her because of something she said, which is a view that is shared by 83% of Americans. This is absolutely appalling. I mean, there's just absolutely no justification for what went on there. The violence with which she was greeted 
from the silence is violence crowd. I mean, they've mm. really turned it on its head, right? Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's just so difficult to watch this. Um, it, this is not a left-right issue, you know? This is a yeah. fringe, fringe, fringe ideology that is justifying heinous things in the name of protecting people, most of whom don't even want this kind of a thing. It, it's really appalling. And I'll, I'll just say one more thing, Robbie, which is this is what happens when the great civil rights fights of yesteryear have been fought and won because these kids still have that revolutionary fervor, but they they don't know what to do with it because this is an amazing country where most of the time, most of us believe that every person should be treated with dignity. And we agree when that doesn't happen that it's bad. And so they, they're left over with that fervor of youth and they don't know what to do it with it. And, and this is what they end up doing with it, justifying men beating on women. So I did a little additional reporting um, on, on the story since this used to be, back in the old days, this was my beat, was the campus kind of free speech right. shutdown stuff. So I contacted, first of all, I saw the New York Post said this was organized by the university's Queer and Trans Resource Center. So I contacted them and they denied involvement. They said the protest was organized by an individual who is not an SF state student and is not part of the Queer and Trans Resource Center. Take that for what that's worth. I also contacted the university itself, and they gave me a statement from the police department of the university that said, there were no arrests related to the event. The disruption occurred after the conclusion of the event, which made it necessary for police officers to move the event speaker from the, the room to a different safe location. <laughs> which sounds, it was a little, yeah, well, there's no arrests. <laughs> nothing, not, it's right. kind of like a tone that nothing bad happened. Well, maybe there should be some arrests. I don't know. Uh, and I also wanted to point out, this is something that the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, FIRE, which is a campus free speech watchdog group. Actually, they broaden their mission now. They don't just do uh, campus free speech, but free speech uh, everywhere. They point out that they, they have criticized very recently this campus, SFSU, for investigating a professor for showing a depiction of the Prophet Muhammad in class. You know, a, a textbook free speech issue, right? You are you are allowed to do that, even if it offends Muslims or anyone else. Uh, but they are they subject subjecting a professor to investigation transparently violating uh, his academic freedom and free speech issue, uh, rights. At the same time, what action are they taking to guarantee the safety of a speaker coming to campus who was threatened by, uh, by progressive activists? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty shocking example of misplaced priorities. So Fire says, stop investigating that professor. Investigate the people responsible for that treatment of Riley Gaines, which, uh, yeah, they should do that. But you know that, that they won't. And, and it, what's, what's interesting is that, you know, of course they wouldn't do that at a private university because a private university at this point is just, you know, a luxury consumer good for the scions <laughs> of the elites, right? So they serve, the administration serves to service these kids in the ways that they have been serviced their whole lives belonging to this elite, right? So of course they don't believe in anything except for that. But this is a public institution, right? Our taxpayer dollars are going to funding this institution, right? They are supposed to view the American public at least as a stakeholder in the education they're supposed to be giving these kids. And that is clearly not happening. I mean, this, you know, so it's it's really that combination of campus culture. And, you know, there's no saving, you know, American universities at this point, I don't think. What I think the, the left view should be is to make sure that people don't have to go to college uh, in order to have uh, a, a dignified life because what, these kids are not learning anything that they need that's going to make them better Americans and better citizens. There's nothing going on there that's in the public interest at this point, as far as I can tell. You know, and, and when people say we want free college, I mean, that's what they want more of. They want more students going through. I mean, what do you think it's like to be a kid in that audience who agreed with, with uh, Riley, right? What, what is it like yeah. to, to witness this after that, right? I mean, my God, you're never going to speak up, you know? I mean, the, the cost there, you want to make the cost of speaking your truth, the truth that, you know, 83% of Americans agree with, right? That, you know, trans women should not be allowed to compete in women's sports, despite the fact that most Americans want trans people to be protected from discrimination. This 
thing they don't want. That is a mainstream view, and they want to make it impossibly costly to express that and, view, and we, we have to push back against that. And so, and another mainstream view, even on a, even on very liberal campuses, it's it's a mainstream view that even if you disagree with the person, they should be allowed to speak. So I, I, there are probably a lot of students on that campus who wanted to hear the perspective of a Riley Gaines type person. Maybe they agree, maybe they disagree. But they don't think she should be met with violence, certainly. That is a fringe belief even on college campuses. It's in, in the research I've done on this in a previous reporting. Fringe even on very progressive college campuses. But the tiny minority of students who think, or activists or you know, professional people on campus, who think it's their job to engage in defensive violence against views that they don't like, it's a small number of people, but they get their way, and no one stops them. And it's it's that's what's so frustrating about it. They're not they don't have any sort of majority on their side anywhere, but they get their way time and time again. Very disturbing. We'll continue to follow that, and we'll have more rising right after this.